everybody, Joe here with Speedway Motors Tech Talk, and today Lonnie Unser is here to talk about racing helmets. And there's a lot to consider when you're shopping for a new helmet, right? Absolutely, but the first thing you want to consider is the rating of your sanctioning body. So each sanctioning body is going to have a specific rating that your helmet needs to meet. You can always exceed that limit and go beyond that rating, but you can never go under that rating. So there's a lot to consider when you're looking for a helmet, and one of the most obvious is helmet material. So what, what are these that we're looking at here? Helmet material is super important. We've got a fiberglass helmet here and a carbon fiber helmet here. The first thing really that is the most obvious is the cost of it. So the carbon fiber is going to be a little bit more expensive, uh, but with that carbon fiber, you're going to lose some weight with the helmet. So this helmet is going to naturally be a little bit more light with this helmet. And then with that, the weight is also something important to consider in terms of fatigue. So the lighter the helmet, the less fatigue you're gonna have on your neck if you're racing for long periods of time. Whereas the fiberglass, if you're racing for or out there on the track for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, this is entirely fine. This isn't necessary. Just again, make sure you're checking with your sanctioning body and the rating that they require. And you might think that it's insignificant, the weight difference, but if you're in the car, you know, the G-forces are like multiplying the weight of the helmet by whatever factor the G-force is, you know, that can be significant turn after turn after turn, right? Absolutely. There's times that when I'm endurance racing, I'm in the car for three hours. And after a three hour stint, I'm going to feel a lot more fresh with the lighter helmet. And then another thing to consider is eye port size. And starting with this open face helmet, when would you wear one of these? So these open face helmets are gonna give you the maximum amount of visibility. So for me, I say this would be a great application if you're doing track days, if you are doing driving schools or maybe in a rally application uh, where you need to communicate with a co-driver or just need a little bit better of communication. But definitely with this one here, double check that your sanctioning body allows it. And then when you move on to a full face helmet, we have a couple here that have some different eye port sizes. What is there to consider there? So with eye port sizes, uh, the, the bigger the eye port size, the more you're gonna be able to see. So for me, for example, when I first started racing, I really wanted to be able to see my entire cockpit. So I chose a bigger eye port size. Uh, now that I've moved up in my racing career, I kinda know where the, all those things are and those are second nature to me. So I've moved to a smaller eye port size. The smaller the eye port size, the better safety you're gonna get. However, if you're in a sports car, you may not need an eye port size as small. Uh, whereas if you're in an open cockpit, an open wheel car, you definitely need the smaller eye port because that's just going to enhance the safety. And then speaking of open cockpit cars, this helmet has some aero. Can you explain what's going on there? So you're gonna see this type of helmet a lot in open wheel cars, and it does have some aero. We have this duck bill here. This is gonna help from getting air up under your helmet and lifting your chin up. And then we have this aero piece in the back, which is also going to help aerodynamics of your helmet in the race car. And then one additional thing to consider is just a regular vented helmet versus a helmet with forced air. What, what are some of the differences there? So with forced air and road racing, it's really just a comfort thing. If you wanna get some air blowing in your helmet, get a little bit more cooling, uh, that forced air will be really nice. Especially nowadays, there's a lot of cars that don't have open windows, they're all shut off. So to have that extra bit of ventilation can be super handy and that prolongs your longevity in the car. The cooler you are over time, the better you're gonna perform. Uh, but that's really just kind of an upgrade if you would like it. However, I raced my first off-road race this year and I took a typical helmet to my off-road race and I had a lot of air swirling around in my helmet, which ended up with me getting dirt in my eyes through the race and it really was kind of something I didn't want to be happening. So I think a forced air helmet like this would have been a lot nicer for me. You can have the forced air vent on the side or the top, and that's just kind of up to you. And then also the ergonomics of your race car and where your blower is. And the forced air then, it's gonna kind of keep some of that dust pushed outside of the helmet. That's exactly it. When you're racing, you want to eliminate any little factors that are gonna annoy you. So for me, when I was racing the Mint 400, having that dust in my eye constantly took my mind off of the task at hand, which was of course winning the race. And so with that forced air, that will kind of eliminate that factor and make it a lot easier for me to focus on the task at hand. 
Those are just a few things to consider when you're shopping for a racing helmet. Thank you, Lonnie, and thanks to everybody for watching.